Hey guys, how's it going? This is Dan with Grapevine Recording. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to use contact in maybe a more obscure way. Um, as I've mentioned in the previous video, we're going to be focusing more, I guess, on a post-production workflow. And I'm going to try and show you some tips on how to, um, you know, improve how, you know your post-production workflow at home and things like that. And just try and give you some tips that hopefully, if you're maybe on post-production minded, you're a more music minded, you might be able to take some of these skills and, you know, hopefully they might be transferable into the field uh, of whatever you're doing with your audio. So... What I'm going to do, I've had a little bit of an issue over the past couple of weeks with a certain idea of what I've been trying to, uh, what I've been trying to achieve, and I've just I haven't figured out a way to do it until now, which is what I'm going to show you. Um, I'm talking about footsteps. So if you think of any any movie or TV show or game, let's th let's say games. Games are a little bit more easier to understand. Every time the player steps. A footstep sound plays, right? So the footstep sounds will be dependent on the type of things that the character's wearing, uh, his movement style perhaps, you know, if he's walking, if he's sneaking, if he's running. And of course the material of whatever the thing is that he's walking on, be it grass, concrete, you know, water, they'll all have their own different sounds. Um, with a lot of the work that I've been doing, I've been taking a game clip so a recording of a game, and I'm trying to add my own audio to that. So I have, for example, on the clip I'll be showing you in a minute, is in Dragon Age Inquisition. And it's basically a guy walking down the road, uh, then walks onto some grass, and then walks across some water and back to some grass. And the problem is with that is whenever I was in Pro Tools, I had to take every individual audio clip and then line it up. So I had to line it up with each step. Which was extremely time consuming. The problem again with that is for to to try and not get boring and to try and you know you don't want every single footstep to sound the same because if it's just that same clack 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 over and over again, as an audience you will hear it and be like, no, that's the same sample over and over again. Similar, for example, let's say with a snare sound in electronic music. You know, if it's just that same snare in and in and in and in with no variation, as humans, we pick up on that and we you know, we can pinpoint that it's the same thing and it gets boring. So, in as well as having to line up a sample with every footstep, you've then got to line up different yet similar samples, which again just adds more and more time. And I was thinking, there's got to be an easier way to do this. Um, of course, a very traditional thing to do in post production would be to have the clip playing on a on a screen, and then the floor around you will be filled with that uh, that material. So, say if it's water, there would be a bucket of water, for example, or you know there'll be some dirt or some grass for for them types of surfaces, and then an actor or yourself would then dress up as that character and then mimic the on screen performance and hopefully then that'll match up you know as close as possible but of course in a bedroom studio that isn't ideal you know i can't bring in a load of dirt and mud and grass and gravel into my bedroom as you can imagine so again i was thinking there's got to be a way there's got to be a way to speed up this process make it easier make it better and i think i've found one so I should preface this that I've actually gone and recorded all these samples before, and I'm sure I'll do a video on how to record footstep samples at some point. Um, but just so you can understand how I did it, I went to... Uh, I'm going to be doing... Uh, I'll do gravel, for example. So I went to a place which had gravel. I took my shotgun microphone, which is just behind me on the floor. I held it on a boom pole and then took individual steps. So I didn't walk in sequence, I just took one step. And then one step, and then one step. From there, I imported them samples into Logic, which I cut them up, separated them, uh, made sure they were clean-ish, you know, took the best ones. I think I took about six or seven. I've then exported them as individual files, put them into a folder named, I think, Footsteps Gravel in my samples folder. And then that's like the housekeeping part of it done. Here's what I'm going to show you is what we're going to do. 
We're going to take them samples, we're going to put them into contact, and we're going to set it up in a way where you can just hit one key, and every time you press that one key, it will choose a different sample out of that series of samples to play. Okay? Now, after that, you'll be able to save that as an instrument, bring it in to a Pro Tools or a Logic Session or whatever DAW you use, and then instead of having to move the the um, the audio, what you could do is watch along to the clip, and basically every time there's a footstep, you just play that key, and you'll just keep playing it in rhythm with them walking or running if it's a little bit quicker, and then when you stop and you play it back, it will then be in sync. So it's kind of a good middle ground between actually performing the movements and actually positioning the audio but let's get into it anyway i'll show you how to do it so this is going to be the final thing so this is one that i just did for grass for example so um let's get my keyboard down an octave okay so let's start afresh so every time i play that a mixture of um of how many samples is there? One, two, three, four, five, six samples will play, as you can see by it going orange when I play it. And that'll just be picked in a completely random order. Um, I also should say that there's, I'm sure there's ways you can do this in many other samplers. This is just the sampler I use. And I just think this is something that I can better explain it to you. Also, the other video I was talking about, you can do something similar to this in battery, which again, I will... Um, I will probably do a video on that just to show you how to do it. So once we've closed that instrument, we're going to be just faced with a blank contact session. Uh, this will be what you get when you just load it up. I'm pretty sure that this system will work for both the free version and the paid version of contact. So uh, what we're going to do is we will take our gravel samples. So I've got six, I guess, footsteps of uh, me walking on gravel. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag it into the contact window and let go. From there, this is going to create a, I guess, an instrument with them samples loaded in. So what I'm going to do is, first of all, rename it to Gravel Walk. And this will just make it easier when it comes to saving in the end. So if we open up the, the instrument so we can see a little bit more, there's a couple of things that we're going to want to do. So if you go into the map and editor, you will see that it's all mapped across, uh, I think it's like an octave and a half. So it'll be... So it'll be each different sample will be triggered based on which zone that I uh, I click in. But what we're gonna do is we need to shorten these down so they only actually take up one key. Again, there's probably a quicker way to do this. I am just unsure as to what that is, but it doesn't take overly long. And then, just to make things a little bit easier, we will just put it within a one octave range from each other, just so they're not all over the place. Again, it's just keeping things a little bit tidier. So if we just move them all down, just so we can see where everything is, and it'll make a little bit more sense in a minute. So that's them all. So now they're all just from C0 up to F0. And then from here, if you click the list view, what as well you want to do is just drag all these into one range. So say just, I think it's C0. So we just drag them all down like this and like this. Um, this might be something that, it might not make a lot of sense what I'm doing, but if you follow along, it will work, believe me. So from here, what you then want to do is go edit and then select all zones. So that'll create a selection of a lot of them, or you can just click and drag, uh, create like a box around them. From there, you go to edit, and then you go move each zone to its own group, and in brackets, it should say clone. So you do that, and it'll create something like this. From there, what you're able to do is go into the group editor. So what you'll see up here is there's now six samples, and this will be for, you know, these are basically groups, and all of these will be for each you know, if you've got six samples, you will have six groups. If you've got 24 samples, you'll have 24 groups. Uh, I'm sure that, you know, you if you have more and more samples, you'll be able to create 
more variety and you know there's less chance that each of these other samples will be triggered so uh you could argue that more is actually better in this case but i think once you get over a, a, a certain amount say i reckon you know you wouldn't be able to distinguish between six samples i don't think especially when they're getting called randomly and we're also going to be doing some added modulation just to again you know try and create variation between all of these samples so now what we can do is basically whenever we hit this so when we hit our c key oh right as you can see up here it's triggering every sample see the way they all go uh, orange or yellow that's not really what we want but there's a little thing here where it says group starts and this is under the group editor window and if you click that and go to cycle random now what it's going to do is play through each of these samples randomly so this is a completely random process if you want a little bit more control about this you could put it onto cycle round robin and then you can alter the position values so it will cycle through. But then again, that you start getting a little bit of repeatability there because it'll cycle like this. It'll go one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three. And it'll keep that kind of um, you know repetitive nature as it cycles through each sample. So personally, I think if you go to cycle random, you then get a completely random uh, so, uh, sample selection. But that's basically it. So what we've done is we've took all of them samples, so the six footstep samples that I took, we've put them into contact as an instrument, but it was spread out across the entire keyboard. What we've done is we've moved it all down to one key. And from there, we've um, assigned a random cycle value. So basically now every time you push that key, it will pick a random sample out of them six samples and then play that. But there's more that you can do as well. Say, for example, uh, you just didn't want... You wanted to create a little bit more of a random feel to this. You can do this. And this is something that I've spoke about in the past when I was talking about gunshots. So if you close all of these and you go into your source, men uh, source window, as you can see here, there's a little button that says Mod. If you click that, this is all your modulation um, parameters. So there's the obvious one with Pitch Bend, which obviously affects the pitch. But what we're going to do, if we remove the pitch bend option and change it to random bipolar and still keep it to affect the pitch, what will happen now is every time that we call a sample, the pitch envelope will be adjusted by two semitones or at least, you know, within the region of two semitones. So two semitones is the maximum that it can be uh, modulated. And that works both in a positive pitch and a negative pitch. Sometimes... I think you can go a little bit too far. So say if I push this all the way up to say an octave, you can do this. Sometimes that's a little bit too much. And I think for what we're doing with footsteps, something about 1.5 will be great. You know, all you're trying to do is create the sense that it's a different footstep each time. It doesn't have to sound drastically different. It's just the slight variation will keep our ears kind of, you know, we won't pick up on that. You really won't. So now we've got this. But as you'll realize as well is depending on the length of the sample, sometimes you might lose a little bit of volume before you... Um, before the sample actually ends. And that's just down to this. That's just down to the amp, uh, the the amplitude envelope. And the way that I think the easiest way to fix this is, you know, it's just a release. So if you load that down too much, you just lose the entire release of the sample. So I think usually if you can figure out how long your sample is, what you can do is just adjust the release to either the length of the sample, or just a little bit longer to be safe. And now when you play it, even just the slightest tap will play that entire sample. So that's basically it. This is how I've figured out the best way to use this. So now all I have to do is open up a Pro Tools session, include con uh, insert contact as an instrument, and then watch the video and play along. And then you can do this for multiple sounds as well, if you wish. Uh, so as you can see on ours, we've set... 
uh, the gravel walking to C0. What we could do is have that on C0, have grass on D0, have water on E0, and basically we can just play the keyboard along with what we're watching. And then from there, if we're happy with that, we can just bounce that out as audio and affect it in whatever way we want. Of course, you've got the option to affect the audio within contact, if that's the way, you know, if you want to keep it a little bit more self-contained, you know, you can add effects, you can add sends, and you can do all that. You can basically do whatever you want. Um, what I would suggest is at the end of this, of course, let's save it. So we go to files at the top, save edited instrument as. From here, we have a couple of other uh, contact instruments that I've made based on these footsteps. Gravel Walk, I think, is a pretty accurate name for this. I'm only saving the patch. I'm not bringing the samples over as well because these patches live within the uh, scope of my samples, so they're going to stay together anyway, so I don't have to copy them over. Save some space as well. Click Save, and your job's done. So if you just want, I could show you how to do this in battery. It's pretty similar. There's a couple of little differences which I think uh, makes contact a little bit more of a um, suitable tool for this job. Of course, again, this is kind of aimed towards post-production. You can do this with any other things. Gunshots, again, is a very valid thing to use this for. Um, personally, I can't really think other than a dr electronic drum uh, sample replacement. You know, if you wanted to just have multiple snares that get triggered at different times... But again, you know, you've got to, it can be a little bit more difficult just based on tuning and things like that of the drums. So, uh, you know, you might find a way to use this with music. And if you do, please let me know, because I think that would be something that I would very much be interested in. But hopefully, hopefully this was clear enough for you. As I say, um, I'm still trying to get back into the swing of things with making videos like this. So many apologies if it's just a little bit... Uh, patched together shall we say because i'm still getting used to it but what i'll do in the description i will put a uh, full description on how how to do this give you a little step-by-step -step guide and hopefully that'll be something that uh, will help you out because as i say this is i like these type of videos where i've had a problem with something and i just haven't figured out the best way of doing it and then i've spent time to work it out and then i can let you guys know i think that's the best way you know i've spent hours searching for youtube videos on how to just figure out specific things and i think you know it's great if you can find someone who actually has that problem figures it out and then makes a video so maybe people don't have to spend hours looking for a specific thing but um yeah hopefully this was useful to you thank you all for watching please remember to subscribe to the channel if you want to see more tips in the future but uh yeah i'll see you all very soon bye bye